who I am thrilled that you've chosen to join me here on a Thursday edition of Five Minutes with Phil. And we are coasting right along in the work week. Now, if you've been hanging with us so far this week, you know that we've done something kind of unique. We're actually looking at the same verses throughout the entire week, Monday through Friday, but we're pulling different truths from these verses here. And again, here's the setting. Abraham is being called by God. God is laying out his plan for Abraham, it's, and it's, it's going to be pretty huge. And it's at this point in Genesis chapter 17 where God starts uh, revealing himself and telling him some things, and he kicks this whole calling off and kind of revealing his purpose. He kicks it all off by giving Abraham a bunch of really important truths. And, uh, and I want to share some of those with you because... I believe they apply to us today as we try to live our lives for the Lord. So uh, look at the screen or grab your Bibles, whatever you prefer. And Genesis 17, starting in verse 1 and going to verse 2. You ready? Here's what it says. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you. Let me read that second verse again where I underlined it. I will confirm my covenant between me and you. What was God doing here? Okay. Uh, So don't, don't miss this. Don't think this doesn't apply to you because it does. God was confirming his promise to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. God had promised him that, and now God said, I'm going to confirm that promise to you. What's God saying? God is saying that the promises that I make to you are true, and you never, ever have to doubt them. So what's God's message to us today? Same thing. God's promises for us are true. And we never, ever need to doubt them. I want you to know that you are not the exception to God's word. Can I say that again? You are not the exception to God's word. If the Bible promises that he will meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory, then that applies to you too. If God's word says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us, And it cleanses from all unrighteousness. If that promise is in the Bible, which it is, then that applies to us as well. God wants to confirm his promises to you. God promises peace to those that need it. That applies to you. God promises wisdom to those who need it and ask him for it. And he'll give it to us generously. That applies to you as well. All of God's promises, the Bible says, are yes and amen. God never goes back on his word. Let me say that again. God never goes back on his word. Well, pastor, I I don't feel that way. You know, it doesn't feel like it. You see, and this is the problem. The problem is you're going by your feelings and you're not going by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We can't go by how we feel. we got to go by what the word of God has to say. The Bible promises that he'll be my shield, he'll be my protector, that he restores, that he's my provider, he's my source of wisdom. The Bible says that he is my forgiver. The Bible says that uh, I can hide uh, in his name and find safety. The Bible's full of so many promises. Today, I want to challenge you. Don't try to rattle off about 20 promises today. Uh, or if you want to, fine. But, but can you hold on to one promise from God's word? Maybe something that I've already quoted. And hang on to that thing for dear life. Because just as God told Abram, I'm going to confirm my promise to you. The Lord would say the same thing to us today. Whatever promises in the word of God, I want to confirm that in you. 
He's going to give you a hope. He's going to give you a future. He has plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. All right, I got to let you go. Rest in the promises of God. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.